episode 20, Lonesome Beaver. The boys are joining the Boy Scouts. Hey, Dad. Don't worry, Mr. Cleaver. I'll see that they don't get in any trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Come on, guys. Let's get going. Good night. Unfortunately, Beaver's too young to join his brother and his friends. Seven and three quarters. I'm afraid you're a little young. You mean I can't join? In a few years, we'll be very happy to have you. But the rule is you must be at least 11. So Wally's going to go camping and Beaver's not going to be with his brother anymore. Uh, what are you going to do while I'm gone, Beef? Who, me? Well, i got a lot of things saved up to do. Me and Liam and Miguel, we were going over the sand hills and catch... There's one way to entertain himself. Even Gus doesn't have time for him today. Inspector coming. You ain't mad at me, are you, Beaver? No, Gus. You're my friend. I don't mind you telling me to get lost. <laughs> oh, the monkeys have no tails and zamboanga. They were bitten off by whales and zamboanga. At that lake, and they had to come all the way back in that open truck. Wally came home early. Is Wally's home? Yes, he was sopping wet. I sent him up to his room. I thought he might be coming down with a cold. Well, he's sick and dead. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 21, Cleaning Up Beaver. Wall and Eddie are going to the movies. Hey, Wally, they don't want to take Beaver. Wait for those grubby little creeps. Well, Mom wants us to. Yeah, but... With them going around, how are we going to talk to any girls in the movies? Cause why? Cause me and me want to sit behind us. <laughs> what are you dirty little You're really gonna Ward thinks if they praise Beaver? Wally's cleanliness, Beaver will get the he hint. Right in the outside, but you ought to see his feet. Come on, man. Took a bath this morning. Then you ought to see him last night. Cooperating. Mom. Do you think I'm a pig, too? Beaver tries to clean up oh, a little bit. How come you got cleaned up this morning? This ain't the day the school nurse looks at us. <laughs> I know. I did a clean up because my brother got cleaned up. Yeah, I know how it is. So Beaver says they should just have separate rooms, in yeah. Wally. So that's what he gets. June is unhappy. I'm crunching the paper at you because of what you did to Wally and the Beaver. But you've turned them against each other. June. Beaver gets scared by himself, though. What's the matter, Beef? I just want to see if you're all right. You're not scared, are you? Are you kidding? What should I be scared of? Wally well, has a change of heart, you though. Want anything again. Just hard. If you want anything, you holler to me. You know something? It might be a good idea if you stayed in here. It would save a lot of yelling back and forth. Well, they compromise. I'm just thinking. Thinking what? Maybe if you were a little bit sloppier and I was a little bit neater, it just might work out. Yeah, we'll give it a try. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 22, The Perfect Father. Now, have to think of something. <laughs> hey, bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. We're going. They're going to the yeah, Denison's. We'd be there by 7 o'clock. Well, goodbye, fellas. Have fun. Gee, Dad, we'd like to. Ward offered to go fishing with them. But we're going to be at the Denison's by 10 o'clock. At the Denison's? Yeah, us and all the guys are going to play basketball with Willie Denison. Ward's a little jealous that the boys are always playing at the Denison's house, so he decides to install a basketball hoop. What are you doing up there? So the boys decide to play over here now since uh, they have a basketball hoop. not to put mayonnaise on Eddie's. He's informed me he's allergic to it. Beaver shoves. Get shoved by Eddie. 
Abby Haskell. Oh. Just for that, I'm going to put mayonnaise on his sandwich. Turns out the hoop is a foot short. This goofy basket's a foot too low. It's only nine feet high. Huh? Looks a hundred feet high from down here. Anyway, he gets them a basketball and he fixes the hoop. Puts up the ten feet. Incidentally, it's a regulation. Boy, it's neat. Oh, by the way, the uh, basket is regulation now. So the boys do come back, but then Ward decides to show off. Becomes a little bit of a ball hog. And the boys get disillusioned and decide to leave. Yeah, I guess me and Ward will stay here. Eventually, Ward says, go on, boys, you can go with them to the Denisons. I learned my lesson from my two older boys. He meets Mr. Denison oh, at the club. He used to be out there with him, throwing passes, pitching baseballs. And he even tried to teach Roger how to run once. A bad athlete in Ward learns that he had nothing to be jealous about. You how to catch a baseball? Because Mr. Denison isn't oh, even out there with the boys. I other kids. I, matter of fact, I'd have been embarrassed if my father... <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 23, Beaver and Poncho. You out the window there. Uh, could you tell me why you would deliberately jump in a puddle of water? Gee, Dad, I just want to see if these new shoes were waterproof. <laughs> Beaver found a lost dog. Actually, he traded it from Larry. You know why? It's a dog. He smuggled it in the house. They call a Mexican hero. Yes, they belongs to somebody. How do you know? He ain't got nothing to show who he belongs to. Well, I know you don't quite understand, Beaver. They play as an ad for the lost dog, and a woman eventually calls. He sounds like the right one. Well, she described him to a T. Says his name's Poncho. She's gonna pick him up in the morning. Beaver's not happy. She uh, promised you a reward, though. I don't want a reward. I just want my dog. Beaver, if it's her dog, you're just going to have to give it back to her. I can't imagine where we could... The woman comes over, but the dog's not to be found. Well, you know how boys are. I have no idea. I never had any children. In class, there was some whimpering heard. Turns out Beaver brought Poncho to school. <laughs> so Mrs. Rayburn has to call. With him to school today. Mrs. Rayburn, he couldn't have brought a dog to school. You see, a woman was coming by the house this morning. Uh. I knew I was going to have to give him back to you. But I only had him two days. So I took him to school because I figured if I kept him a little longer, he might remember me a little better. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 24, The State versus Beaver. Boys are building a go kart. I don't know what we can do about that. I show up when we get started. We're all going the same direction. <laughs> anyway, with Ward's help, a couple weeks later, and using the lawnmower's motor, they've got themselves a little go kart. It wouldn't hurt to just start up the motor, would it? Beaver's not supposed to be in this by himself. I don't, know. I don't think we better. Only with Ward I around. I bet you don't know how. Sure I do. Of course, that's all he needs to start the motor is Larry to provoke him. For I'm not supposed to take it out by myself. But you're not by yourself. I'm with you. I don't know. Oh, I bet you don't even know how to drive it. Oh, no. There he goes. Beaver took it out on the street and got pulled over. We do something wrong, mister? That depends. How old are you kids? Hey, vehicle come. Holy smokes, Beaver. You got a ticket. Sure guess so. Boy, you're in big trouble. This is me. He ends up in hey, court. Who is this other young gentleman? I'm his guardian. <laughs> his official guardian? No, he's my official brother, but he's my guardian today. <laughs> But I was there by myself with my and Dough, and he was eating apples. And he said, let's take a ride. And I said, I'm not supposed to take a ride by myself. And he said, you're not by yourself. I'm with you, so I took a ride. You mean... 
the judge lets him off. Well, you two boys can run along home now. We'll just expunge this from the records. Thank mm. you, sir. Thank you, sir. And boys, uh, if I were you, I think I'd get rid of that car. The school took you? The boys come clean. No. I got arrested. Arrested? Arrested? arrested. I took Larry Mandel for a ride in the car you helped. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 25, The Broken Window. Right through the cleaver's front window. Hey, let's get out of here. Have it repaired. But I just want one thing understood. From now on, there'll be no ball playing close to the house. Right? Right, Dad. We promise. We're not supposed to play ball near but the guess house. Guess what happens? Just throw me one. I never hit it anyway. Okay. I'll throw it easy. <laughs> Eddie has an idea. Your father's out, huh? Yeah, him and Mama told the building lot. Then what are you worried about? You just roll it down and don't say nothing. Boys are going to try to fix it before Dad gets home. Something wrong, Wally? I'll say there is. It costs almost $16 to get the window fixed. No, we got a $6.35. We going somewhere? What his plans right. for the next day? You guys have been after me for two weeks to take you up to Crystal Falls. Okay? Tomorrow we're going to drive up there for a picnic. In the car? Yeah. I said roll up the window. The wind's blowing on Wally and your mother. It's not blowing on you, is it, Wally? No, I didn't even know it was open. <laughs> it's not blowing Lord had heard the crack. Earlier, and he thought he broke it. Something good really did happen. Well, I'll tell you what happened, boys. Last night, I went out to put something in the car, and I slammed the car door. I heard glass break. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 26, Train Trip. It was nice of Aunt Martha to invite them up to Riverside. Hope they're not getting her any trouble. I don't think they are. Before they left, I made them promise that all the time they were there, they absolutely would not behave like they do around here. The boys want to buy their well, own tickets. The train does leave in a few minutes just over there on track number five. I suppose we could say goodbye here. Thank you, Aunt Martha. Goodbye. She'll give them the money to buy the tickets. The boys buy some food, some candy bars, all this stuff. I but I lost one of the dimes. Was it your dime or mine? Yours. And they suddenly don't have enough to buy a ticket back to Mayfield. Come back later, mister. <laughs> because we only had that front money. Well, boys, I'm sorry, but you can't ride to Mayfield without tickets. You gotta get there, mister. We're coming back from the senior Aunt Martha. And uh, the conductor's loaning them the money. Gee, thanks, mister. We'll sure send it. I know you will, boys. Thank you, sir. Real. So they get the money together. You use the 50 cents Mrs. Dawson gave you for catching your parakeet. And they'll have enough to pay off the conductor. Uh, Eddie Haskell's dad comes over. He was on the train and heard the whole thing. No, no tickets. Well, I certainly had to admire their ingenuity. What, the story they gave that conductor was great. Conductor tomorrow. You know why? I'm sure glad this day is over. Yeah, me too. Listen, Beaver. Why'd you have to tell the conductor that crazy story? No way, fellows. Uh, what are you going to do about that little matter you have to take care of? You know, between you and the train conductor? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to mail it to him tomorrow, Dad. Oh, fine. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 27, My Brother's Girl. Lack of social awareness in the 8th grade. There's an 8th grade dance Such coming. Sense? Such as the boys aren't as aware of the girls as the girls are aware of the boys. <laughs> well, I don't... Just go with 
Wally Cleaver. My son, you will. He's not taking a girl. He's told everyone he's going with Mary Ellen husband. Rogers. You just wait and see. Hey, Mary Ellen. Tomorrow's Saturday. Can I come over in the morning and run your father's lucky cranes again? Mary Ellen is well, trying to befriend Beaver. I don't know Beaver. To get through to Wally. I think my mother was sort of mad yesterday. Cranes. Beaver convinced Wally to join him, yeah, Mary Ellen's. They sure are. Well, maybe I will. I don't mess around with Eddie tonight at the dance. She told Beaver that her parents didn't like having just one boy there. You want to go much either? Oh, no. She gets Wally alone at one point. It's awful the way some of these girls like Kathleen and Francis will just do anything to get a boy to take them. <laughs> they managed to ditch Beaver for good here. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll be along later. And she convinces oh, Wally to yeah. go to the dance with her. Well, so long. Uh, my ginger ale in the kitchen. Uh huh. Well, Beaver, I'm afraid Mary Ellen may have just got friendly with you so she could get Wally to take her to the dance tonight. I'm not shocked. And how does... As a woman, I'm very proud of Mary Ellen. June feels great about it. Act this way? It's the way women have to act. Yep. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 28, Next Door Indians. Eddie tells a story about how his relatives found some treasure under the water. Anyway, they got over a hundred thousand dollars worth of treasure. Yeah, Beaver says an Indian fight took place in front of his house at one point. No proof. Sure I have. What kind of proof? Well, uh... Uh... I found real arrowheads. You find an Indian arrowheads and bullets and stuff. Do you know what they're going to do tomorrow? What? Well, they're coming over here with rakes and shovels and stuff. To start digging across the street. The bearings on the other vacant lot across the street. They're burying arrowheads, Wally had. <laughs> and sure enough, Wally finds the arrowhead, of course. Hey, it's a real Indian arrowhead. Well, all right. Yes, it is a real arrowhead. What's this on here? Find an arrow, too. Like Printing. J A P A N. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I never heard of no Japanese Indians. They find some garnets. Hey, Beaver, is this some more of your funny junk? Heck no, we didn't bury nothing on this side of the lot. <laughs> the boys think they're valuable rocks. Me and Juan, the big guy's got a secret. That's nice. I'm not allowed to tell what it is. What you mean, Gus? Well, I mean, these ain't the kind of garnets you sell to a jeweler. These are the kind they grind up to make sandpaper. They're worthless. You mean they ain't worth nothing? We think we was all rich. But they was the kind you made sandpaper out of. Oh. Good night, Dad. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 29, Tenting Tonight. I just sent Wally in to look for you, didn't you see him? Let's come down here in a while. Ward's picking him up at the movie theater. All right, now you stay right here. I gotta push my jacket. All right, all right, get your jacket. And everybody's right, lost. Get on out of here. These kids went in that theater today at noon. It's now 20 minutes after 6. You spent over six hours today sitting in that stuffy movie theater. Yeah, they sure can be off me at 35 cents, don't they? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Next weekend, I'm going to take them up to Friends Lake for an overnight camping and fishing trip. Oh, boy, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you haven't had time to do that in a long time. No, I haven't. Time to report myself. But there's a work emergency the following weekend. Sign your name if you want me to. Thank you very much, Fred, but I think I'd better meet you down at the office first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'll take the boys another time. Nope. Here we go. They understand. They're not happy. Well, uh, have a good day, fellas, and I'll see you later. They're going to go the next week instead. You know, boy, we told Eddie and all the guys we were going camping. But when we see if they caught us, they're watching Vampires of the Amazon. If we can't go to the movies, what are we going to do? Well, I guess we'll just have to do nothing.
The boys decide to camp anyway. In the backyard. If there's not anything brewing in the morning, that's just us cooking our breakfast. Of course, a huge storm comes that night. Well, I think you ought to go out and tell those boys to come in. Sure, and I disappointed them about the camping trip. I can't go out there now and spoil a little fun they are having. The boys survived yeah, fine. May have accidentally left the kitchen door on. But they slept inside once it rained too hard. Accidentally? <laughs> they went back out when the rain stopped this morning. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 30, Music Lesson. Wally made the baseball Coach, team. We each got two flies. I caught the first one. The second one hit me on the head. On the head? Beaver didn't make the other team. So to impress Ward. There's permission for the beaver to take music lessons. Beaver has another idea. Music? Uh-huh. He's never been interested in music before. Well, I guess he was so disappointed about not making the baseball team. Yeah. I think I'm going to go out for the clarinet. I don't know how it sounds, but I like the way it looks. Well, that's fine. I, uh, I do hope, though, that it's not going to turn out like the ice skating lessons you had. That's Beaver after a few lessons. <laughs> well, that was very nice, Beaver. You, Beaver, Mr. Willis just giving you lessons because he had an extra clarinet. You're awful, isn't he, Whitey? He's not really awful. He just sounds that way when he plays. <laughs> Beaver doesn't make the band. Maybe next year. Uh. Beaver doesn't tell Mom and Dad, though. I almost forgot. <laughs> hey, Beaver, how you coming along with the band? Oh, fine. My fingers feel great. <laughs> Wally figures it out. All right, Beaver. When they kick you out of the band? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And you've been trying to think back and forth just to make it look good. Look. But guess what? Here's a notice from the boys' school. Grand Avenue School Band Concert, 7 p.m. Thursday night. That's tonight. Yes. Well, I wonder why the beaver didn't show it to us. He said... The truth comes out. Why would he deliberately try to deceive us like this? Well, you got such a kick out of me making the baseball team and everything. Why don't you like him for some too? Leave it to Beaver. Episode 31, New Doctor. Well, he's not feeling well. What are you doing that for? Well, I felt, felt kind of sore this morning. You feel sick, Wally? Let's call see how Wally was getting along. Wally stayed Dr. home. Dr. Richardson just left. He says if Wally stays in bed all day today, he can go back to school tomorrow. Give him some pills. Never saw. Wally uh, gets spoiled. <laughs> He's got a model. Dad's bringing home ice cream. Hey, what's this? One sherry has a magic set. Plus, hey. his school friends bought him a gift. It cost two dollars and thirty cents. I was a treasurer. <laughs> Boy, this is real neat. Got sick around here anyway. You and Beaver's me. a little jealous. Yes, huh? Yeah, you're the one that got sick, all right. Excuse me, Beaver. What are you doing? The next day, Beaver is sick. I got good. When I got up this morning, I still felt kind of sore. <laughs> well, see you. Beaver's classmates don't yeah, bring a gift, though. Did you bring me anything for the class? Yeah, we brought you your homework. <laughs> Sick, but he looks awfully worried. Doctor's coming over. You know, I um, wonder if he got the sore throat from Wally or just the idea from him. The doctor. But I think you and I had better have a little talk. Did you ever hear about the boy who cried wolf? No. Is he one of your patients? Well, you know you shouldn't do a thing the like this. The truth comes out. Yes, Dad. Dr. Bradley told me about all the really sick people in the world who knew him. I won't do it never again, Dad. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 32, Beaver's Old Friend. That's a 
shot put. They're cleaning out the garage. They're awful close to setting a school record with this once. What are you doing with it? Well, the object is to toss it as far as you can be. Here. <laughs> Beaver finds his old stuffed animal. That's Billy! Well, whoever he is, he's had quite a turpentine bath. <laughs> hey, guys, we gotta cut off. No, I don't want anything. Beaver tries to rescue Billy from the trash but doesn't want to be seen doing it. What, the guys come over you just as he finds them. You know what he does when you throw something over the fence. Yeah, he'll rip it to pieces. Yeah. The beaver won't let him do that. The beaver had to take off with the guys and he didn't have a chance to put Billy someplace safe and now Billy's going out with the trash. Beaver eventually tracks down the trash man and says, Can you take a look for me? Just walk around up there. If you step on your stomach, you'll growl. Believe it or not, he was found. Boy, Billy, you smell worse than ever now. You're not good looking. But you're the only bear I ever had. Billy, I was just thinking. Maybe there's something we can do to unsmell him. Come on, Beaver. The boys used a lot of perfume on him. It's Beaver's old teddy bear. Well, I haven't seen him in years. I found that when we were cleaning out the garage. I threw it out in the trash. I'm going to take Billy downstairs and I'm going to give him the best cleaning he's ever had. <laughs> you know, Warden. Oh, no, Mom. I'm too big for that. I'm going to give him to Benji. Little Banshee from across the street? Yeah. They think he's got the measles. And when you got the measles, Billy's the best friend you can have. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 33, Wally's Job. You do it for nothing? Painting garbage so cans. <laughs> well, what do you think it's worth? Well, they're two big cans here. How about 50 cents a piece? Okay, that's a deal. That's very nice, but I don't have any domestic problems, and Wally's out playing baseball. He's playing baseball? Who said he'd be here? I think he was counting on you for getting the paint again. Big things here? And he thinks he's being ripped off. 50 cents a piece for him. 50 cents a piece? When my old man had his painted, the guy charged him $3. Yeah, but he was probably a real painter. Wally, <laughs> you're not asking your father to pay you $3, are you? Oh, no. No. I just said that's what Eddie's father paid a guy. Well, I assure you, I have absolutely no intention of paying that kind of money for painting trash cans. You should wait until Wally makes up. Beaver offers money. to paint him for nothing. I'll do a real good job. We'll have the prettiest trash cans on the whole block. Well, I'll say this, Beaver. I think if you did do the job, you should get the same money Wally was going to get. Yes, I could take money. So sure enough, Beaver goes out to paint the trash cans. Wally's not too for pleased. For 50 cents a piece. That was supposed to be my job. I made a deal with Dad. I made another deal with Dad. You little sneak. You better quit that paint or I'm going to sock you. You come near me, I'll let you have with a paintbrush. You wouldn't do that. Oh, no, I'm willing you are. I got you anything I can. <laughs> Dad. Got bad blood between the boys. Yes, what is it, Beaver? Wally's well, got his elbows on the table. <laughs> yes, um, Wally? Thank you, dear. <laughs> Dad, Beaver's chewing with his mouth open. <laughs> boys. Fire down at the lumber yard. The boys are each doing one trash can. Yeah, the whole place is going up in flames. Come on, let's get over there before they put it out. What are you doing? The fire off the lumber yard. Fire company's out from all over. Well, must be quite a fire. Yes, it must be. Dear, I wonder if you'd go out to the garage and put those brushes in some turpentine. I won't be too long. So Ward wants to see it, too. So when the boys and Ward come home, the trash cans have been painted. Hey, look, Dad, the cans are painted. Did you finish them for us? 
No, boys, I didn't. Yeah, do or die, Dad. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't think of it. And anyway, my reward is on its way. That uh, new hat you told me not to buy? Leave it to Beaver. Episode 34, Beaver's Bad Day. Or I might not do something. Larry's coming over. We'll see when he gets here. Well, I have to go grocery shopping. Before you start playing or go out of the house, I want you to go upstairs and take your good clothes off. Okay, Mom. Beaver didn't change his clothes quick enough. But I'm not supposed to play over there. But we're not going to be playing. We'll just be picking up money. That's right. I guess I could go. They're playing at a new house being built. What'd you do that for, you wise guy? Oops. Uh-oh. I'm all right, but I don't think my pants are. That's his good pants, too. He tells him that a dog ripped it. Eddie told him to lie about it. Oh, this one ripped and there is Pam. Well, be. But I'm sorry. That's Ferguson. Eventually he told the truth. He got yelled at for lying. And now Ward's lying. At any other time, it's just one of those things. Alright. Goodbye, boy. He doesn't want to spend the evening with Fred. This one would be. No stood figs for dessert. Beaver, you know you don't like stewed figs. Oh, yeah. Hey, Dad, why don't you make him sleep on the floor? Gee, Dad, that's me. The next day. Me too. He said you could lick Waller way and tie behind your back. Then he pushed me off the seesaw and Beaver ripped his pants. Wally's there Larry? today. A fight almost ensues. Eddie's dog rips Beaver's pants. For real today. And I want the truth this time, not a lot of nonsense. Well, there was a dog, see? And I pushed Wally, and then the dog jumped on me. All right, Beaver, that's enough upstairs. Yeah, there really was a... with him. The truth comes out. Her son Larry was there, and he saw it all. It seems that... Wally and Eddie got in some sort of an argument, and in the confusion, Eddie's dog ripped the beaver's pants. Oh, my gosh. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 35, Boarding School. <laughs> Company's coming. That was Bernice Franklin. Her boy Johnny is home from military school, and he's coming over to see Wally and the beaver. Johnny Franklin? Oh, that's the kid we took fishing. He fell out of the boat. Let's see. They don't have horses. The boys are kind of impressed by Johnny with his military Johnny. outfit and stories of guns and yeah. horses. Yeah. Back at his school. Well, man, I've got to get going. Yes. Wally suddenly wants to go too. You can ask Dad if you can go to Bell Point? Well, not all at once. You know, if you want something real good, you gotta be careful how you ask. Um, can I go to Bell Point Military Academy next year? Wally, uh, why would you bring that subject up? On occasion, and if he wants to go, we'll let him go where he's going to be happy. I'm glad we agree. But there's only one thing, Ward. If he gets homesick or, or a horse bites him or something, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> Last year, my pop started hitting around about military school. All about learning to be neat and getting better marks. But he wasn't getting rid of me that easy. And he thinks they just want to get rid of Wally. Gee, I don't think my father's trying to get rid of me. He never came over before. I don't know. I guess Mom and Dad invited him. Now, well, Wally's yeah. starting to believe it. Yeah. Wally, don't you still want to go to boarding school? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess I do. Wally, we've talked about it all the way. I do you or don't you? Well, gee, Dad, anything you say. Beaver, what are you doing here? Dad, I don't want to talk to you. What is it? How come you don't like Wally anymore? It all gets straightened out. Yeah. 
He and I kind of talked it over. And we figured I wouldn't go to Bellport next year. How come? Well, I think the other guys are going to Mayfield. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 36, Beaver and Henry. Up there. <laughs> Wally and the Beaver and I are building a trap. For animals or people? For animals. We're going to catch that gopher that's been nibbling the tops off your flowers. So they build a trap and are expecting to find a gopher instead. I think two words in the same family. They decide to keep it. Confusing. What are we calling Henry? Henry? Well, why would we call him Henry? I don't know. It's a nice name. I believe Henry is hardly the proper name for a young lady in her condition. Really? Henry's a girl. How soon do you think? Henry's given birth. Henry, I'm there! What's the matter? A bunch of little rats knocked Henry down. They're out there biting him. I to tell you something about them. Yeah, Dad? Well, just be careful that you don't pick up any of the babies or handle them while they're this young. Well, gee, how come? We well, see, robbers are not really a domestic animal. Well, before Ward or Wally have a chance to tell Beaver this, he picks one of them up. And now the fear is that the mother will reject it because it smells like human. Hey, Mary, it feels funny. Can't take care of it anymore? Never? Yeah, it'd probably die. So just be sure you don't pick any of them up while they're babies. Oh, sure, Wally. Maybe a rabbit. Just about it. He goes to Gus for help. Oh, well, then I guess you've got plenty of time to do something about it. Is there really something I can do? Your mother's talcum powder, and you sprinkle a little of it on all the little rabbits. Will that really do something? Yep. That way they all smell the same to the mother. It's a vanilla extract. There must be some around the kitchen. And put it right on the mother's nose. Then when she sniffs, she don't sniff rabbits. She don't sniff people. She sniffs vanilla. They wouldn't smell like people. Beaver tells Henry Ward what happened. Be scared. Beaver, did you think of this all by yourself? No. Gus is finding better at for me. Oh. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 37, Beaver Runs Away. Larry's oh, coming over. So Larry cons Beaver into using his father's power tools to drill some holes. But Beaver went right through the wood. It did more than uh -oh. that, though. Went right to the garage, too. <laughs> Beaver, I've told him a thousand times not to touch my power tools. Yet the minute my back's turned to you, he drills holes in the garage wall. Well, maybe it was an accident. Twice? Boy, I want to be here when he gets home. What you did shows that you have very little respect for what I tell you. Beaver thinks Larry's more to blame. But gee, Dad, I didn't mean it to happen. It just Beaver, happened. I try very hard to provide a nice home for you. I try to do the right thing for all of us, don't I? Beaver decides to run away. So you're, um, you're leaving home, huh? Yes, sir. And I'm not never coming back. Well, don't you want to talk it over? No, sir. Well, he just ran away from home. Oh, well, let's go get him. No, no, that's exactly what he wants us to do. But he might mean it. Now, June, there's nothing to worry about. He'll walk around the block once, and he'll be back by the time we finish our soup. He said he was going to join the pirates and come back with a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Ward Cleaver, if he does, I'll never speak to you again. All right, I still think I'm right about this, but if you insist on undermining my authority, go ahead. She's going right to look now, for him. I don't care about authority. All I care about is my baby. Well, I know he's out there somewhere cold and hungry. Beaver's at Larry's oh. eating dinner. I may try running away sometime. Did your father try to stop you? Nobody tried to stop me. Well, I'm set on household. They now know he's at Larry's. Did you try to party with a friend? 
Never mind, I'll go and get him myself. All right, all right, if you want to spoil him and give in to him, make a baby out of him. That's exactly what I want to do. Felt pretty bad. Ward ran away once when he was a kid. His father didn't stop him. Then how come you didn't come after me? Um, well, I guess I made a mistake, Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 38, Beaver's Guest. Well, he'd like to have a friend stay overnight. This weekend? Uh-huh. Oh, I had kind of a hard week. I was sort of counting on taking it easy. Well, dear, I think we owe it to him. And the other parents are always having boys over. You know he's my friend. Larry's coming over. We could, Beaver. Of course, we'd have to ask his parents first, make sure it's all right with them. Oh, that's okay. They bring him way over at 11 o'clock in the morning. Apparently, the boys aren't getting along. Well, what's he doing that for? I don't know. No, I don't mind, Dad. Beaver, how long has Larry been standing on the front porch? Why do you want to go home? Because Beaver hit me in the stomach. Right where I almost had my operation. <laughs> You come on in the house with me. I've got a little disagreement. So I heard. He hit me, Mrs. Cleaver. He hit me right when I almost had my operation. I hit you because you wrecked my foot. I want to go to my grandmother's. So they called a cab. I have to take you to your grandmother's. Gee, Dad, does Larry have to go home? We were just like to have fun. Have fun? Later that night. What is it? They found a bunch of candy bars, wrappers. Mrs. Cleaver, was dark in here. <laughs> Gee, Larry, when we ate those two after supper, you told me they were all gone. I wasn't counting the ones under the pillow. I'm sorry I got sick from eating, and Beaver hit me in the stomach. <laughs> Larry was ill. Oh, uh, well, I'm afraid the boys ate a few too many candy bars. You said I could have someone over sometime soon. Now it's Wally's turn. Hey, Wally, you can have someone over. Sometime. Gee, thanks. I'd like to have Eddie Haskell over next weekend. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 39, Cat Out of the Bag. Out of the Bag. Good. The now boys have a job. Retire. Well, not quite yet. The Donalds is next door going away for the weekend, and they want the boys to water the lawn, pick up the papers, and feed their cat. Peter, you boys better get ready for supper. Okay, Mom. Hey, Dad. Don't worry about a thing. We're doing the job together. I won't let Beaver mess up anything. Donaldson <laughs> wants you to take her out for a while, and then he wants you to feed her and put her to bed. Here's Puff Puff. Now, boys, I want you to be very careful with her. She's a valuable cat, and we mustn't let anything happen to her. I don't know why you guys are up to this job or not. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Squirt. Hey, you guys, you going over the carnival this afternoon at Mexico's Field? Carnival? Yeah, they got rides and a Ferris wheel, and Tui says they got a real lion. Now, one of you take the job today, and the other can take it tomorrow. After all, this is vacation. Your parents aren't allowed to make you work all the time. <laughs> it's state law. So basically, Wally's going to go with Eddie to the carnival. Unfortunately, Eddie's dog Wolf comes back and chases off the cat. Beaver left the gate open. Uh, excuse me. What happened? Cat got away. In the middle of the night, the boys hear the cat crying, and they find him. Wow. Her. She's really way up there. Come on down, Puff Puff. It's up. I think one. Come on, Beaver. Try to climb down with the cat. I can't. I'm scared to. Well, then leave her there. Climb down by yourself. I'm scared to do that, too. They gotta wake up their dad. Hey, Wally. It's a beaver, Dad. Is he sick? No. He's outside, up a tree. Oh. <laughs> up a tree? Yeah. Here, get you in there. The Lord saves the day. Hey, let me help you, Father. Are you all right, honey? Yeah. Oh, what a man. Uh, sorry about that, and I 
assure you we have no intention of letting them keep money for a job they didn't do. No, 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 that's what I wanted to tell you. They came over this morning, told us what had happened, refused to accept a nickel. They refused. All right, quickly here. Finally finished season one of um, Leave it to Beaver. This is uh, part two of this DVD uh, review series. Um, again, one of my all-time favorite shows. Uh, you can get this from a box. If this is a disc one from the six, six, D, I don't know, so whatever, six season box set put out by Shout Factory. I had no issues with um, the uh, second half of this uh, DVD, although... Uh, I did have a couple issues with one of the DVDs on here uh, for part one that I did. But anyway, fantastic series. Love this show. Um, season one was great. Uh, the first few seasons of Leave it to Beaver are great um, until he starts to mature a little bit. Then it's not as much fun. But anyway, Leave it to Beaver, great show. Let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments down below. Leave it to Beaver. Watch it. Bye.